It's Wednesday, which means we got some more Acolyte videos. Oh, and iced coffee. Ice, this is actually McDonald's iced coffee. I got it because it's like a buck fifty. I don't recommend this. It's like under two hundred calories or around two hundred. This thing sucks. Okay, just, just don't, just don't, just don't. So let's talk about the acolyte last night. New episode of the acolyte, and not even, not even five minutes after the show, there's already people complaining online. Oh my God! Here's my shock face. Um. So here's the thing. I, I liked last night's episode. I don't think it's a great episode by any means. Here's the, here's the thing I have accepted with the Acolyte. If you're willing to just let bad writing go and just sit back and watch it for the pure entertainment factor, it's not that bad. It's actually pretty enjoyable. I actually had a great time with last week's episode. I just absolutely loved that character. Just going ham on all those Jedi Padawan. Like, it was just awesome. Like, he is hands down the best part of the show. Like, I like this actor so much. I like the character. And a lot of things... Here's the, here's the problem when you're going from week to week, right? Because you ask questions... And they don't always answer it in that episode. Like, like everybody kept saying last week, like, well, how is his helmet and stuff shorting out lightsabers? Like, what's going on with that? Well, nerds like me would go, well, in canon or, or old school, um, in canon and in the other, like, Legends stuff and whatnot, there was a type of metal called cortosis that can do that, right? You don't get that in the show, but they say it in this episode. So maybe they should have put that in the same episode. The thing, the point I'm trying to make is a lot of times when you're going week to week, you ask questions and they answer your questions in an episode or two later. And, and that's sort of like the problem when you're going week to week, rather it be in a movie where if you sit down for a two hour movie, they explain everything. So when you get done with the movie, you're like, oh, okay, that explains that where you watch an episode like, man, he's shorting out lightsabers. What's going on? Oh, they can just do that now. And then the next episode, he's like, yeah, this, you know, this metal called cortosis and whatnot and all this. And, um, yeah, like I said, I really, really enjoy this actor particularly. Like, I, I think he's the highlight of the show, like absolutely the highlight of the show really love everything that he is doing and what he's doing in this past episode even though a lot of people hated this scene they're like oh my god 50 shades of star wars now because he's shirtless and i'm at the point now where like you can't do anything in star wars without somebody complaining this is what george lucas went through this is what George Lucas went through with the prequels, and the reason why he ended up selling it off to Disney was because no matter what he did, fans complained about it. And you see fans now, they're just like bitter old guys like me, and they just want to complain. Oh, my God, he was shirtless. Oh, my God, this and that and that, and, you know, and, and people are just complaining about it. Now, here's the thing. Do I think this is a very well-written show? Absolutely not. Like, like episode three was horrible, and episode, uh, not episode three. Was it episode three the one with the witches, the power of one, the power of two, the power of many? No, absolutely awful show. Even last week, like, it didn't make sense why May said she's going to turn herself in. Then when she comes across the Jedi, she tries to kill the Jedi. Like, it, the writing isn't top-notch. But if you go into this thing looking to see a House of the Dragon or Sons of Anarchy or Breaking Bad, you're not going to get it. And I think we're at a point where we have to just accept that as fans, that if you want the, these very character-driven stories, we're not getting that with Disney+. Plus. Their sole focus is to <clears throat> put out content that is entertaining. I am entertained by this show. I am thoroughly entertained by this show. It's not like Book of Boba Fett where I was like, this is just boring. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Like, like I can forgive bad writing if I'm entertained and intrigued for the next episode. I can I can easily forget. Like, like I won't forgive it. You know, I, I would still say, no, it's absolutely horrible writing and all this. I, I understand all this. But... I am more accepting to it if I see more stuff like this and, and more stuff that's entertaining. If I see more lightsaber duels and all this stuff and it has me intrigued for the next episode to find out, like, what's this guy's deal? 
that I am willing to overlook some bad writing because I know what I'm getting. It's the same thing with the Michael Bay's Transformers. I don't think anybody after the first Transformers movie went in expecting to see Citizen Kane or Gone with the Wind. Like, they knew what they were going to get. I go into the Disney Plus Star Wars show, the Disney Plus shows in general, whether it be Miss Marvel, whatnot. I go in knowing, like, hey, this is going to be not the gr greatest when it comes to writing. I just want to be entertained. Sometimes it works out. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes we get She-Hulk that is just so unbearable that you can't watch it. And I can understand why some fans are turned off by the Acolyte. I'm not. I actually really enjoy the Acolyte. I think this is one of the Star Wars. Like, the, the biggest problem with Star Wars is they're, they're kind of like all over the map. Ahsoka introduces all these characters and... They don't explain what happens to these characters. It, it, it is. It's very messy writing. But right now with the Acolyte, we know what's going on. We just don't know why it's going on. We know that May is, is under this, this Dark Lord, whatever, killed a bunch of Jedi. We don't know why they killed the Jedi. We, we don't know the answer to that. We have two episodes left. And that's the intriguing part. And now you see where, like, maybe the sisters are going to switch roles. One's going to go to the... It's intriguing. It's very much intriguing, and I'm, I'm kind of down for that. And like I said, this guy, I think, is the highlight of the show. Now, the one thing that kind of just annoys me to know, and I, I was catching my buddy Danny and Anzo's stream last night, and I understand when you're doing YouTube content like I'm doing right now that you have to, like, put in speculations or, like, what does this mean or what does this mean to intrigue your audience and whatnot. But I think people get too over-carried away with speculating who and what, where and when, why. Just watch the show. Let it tell the story for yourself. You know, because people come up with all kinds of weird theories. Some people are like, oh, this is the beginnings of the Knights of Ren. I, I don't see that personally. Because the Knights of Ren isn't force sensitive. I believe the original the original leader was force sensitive. And then Kylo killed him and Kylo became the Knights of Ren. Kylo was force sensitive. But I, I don't see how something that takes place at this point 150 years before episode uh, 7. How it could lead into the Knights of Ren. I could be wrong. Maybe they are leaning that way. And that would be cool. And then people are like pulling out Darth Pain, Bane and Plagueis and all this. And I'm like, just focus on the story that they're telling. What is the story telling us at this particular moment? Let's not dive into the deep lore on how does this connect to Bane? How does this connect to Plagueis? How does this connect to Kylo? That's the one thing that annoys me when I watch other YouTubers' content is they're not listening to the story that is being told. They're coming up with their own headcanon on how these pieces fit into the larger puzzle let's focus on this this puzzle let's not focus on the thousand piece puzzle let's focus on this one little 25 piece puzzle and not this thousand piece puzzle and, and by the end of it it could connect to a lot of those things people are speculating but i i don't want people to get their hopes up and then it not happen and and that's sort of the part I, i'm at right now as for this guy right he says in this episode very clearly, like, a Jedi such as you might call me Sith. He's not saying that he is a Sith Lord. And, and I think that's something pe so many people are racking their mind. What is he? Is he a Sith? Is he? Ahsoka's not a Jedi. Ahsoka's come out and said, I am not a Jedi. People refer to her as Jedi because she has a lightsaber and does cool shit with the Force, but she isn't a Jedi. Jedi is a rank. I, I, I can put on a badge. That doesn't make me a police officer. I have to go through training camp and i had to go through police academy and all this stuff right it's sort of the same thing with jedi and sith sith there's one there, there's two the rule of two the master and the apprentice i feel like this character is a sith fanatic and he wants to be a sith that's why he wanted to recruit may to be his padawan so he can become a sith right you look at people like asaz ventress she was not a sith she was very much trained in the arts of jedi she had red crimson lightsaber she was under count dooku but dooku was a sith and palpatine was his master only two there can be and i think when people really kind of rack in their brain on what this all means i mean look at the title of the show it's called the acolyte it is clear he is a acolyte 
Now, you can go up and look at what the definition of acolyte is and all that stuff, but people are like, oh, man, he's a Sith Lord. How could this be? That I mean, they said that oh, Sith hasn't been around for a millennium, you know, and blah, 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 he, but he's a Sith Lord. Just because he uses the Force to use his red lightsaber doesn't mean he's a Sith. The title of the show is The Acolyte. You know what I mean? The Acolyte. And if you get into a lot of, you know, the canon stuff, whether it be the Aftermath trilogy and all that stuff, you can, they, they, there, there's a group of fanatics called the Acolyte of the Beyond, where it's just a group of Sith fanatics that are going around collecting Sith lightsabers and Sith artifacts, and they're called the Acolytes of the Beyond. And that, it's just very simple. I feel like this guy is just an Acolyte. He desperately wants to be a Sith, whether he has a master or not is yet to be seen because we have two episodes left. I personally feel like he was once in the Jedi order. Something happened when it came to like back when episode three, what was it, episode three or episode four? I can't remember the power of many, whatever. But when it came to that episode and we saw the decimation of all the witches, I believe he was there. He was present. Something happened. Now, I do think he does have a master. Maybe one of the mother witches is his master. We don't know. That's the best part about the show is the intriguing part of the show. Now, like, like I said, I personally liked this past episode. I felt like there was a lot of character development. There was a lot of stuff that did kind of bother me. Like, I am willing to overlook. Like, how Soul just doesn't realize he's talking to May and not Osha. That just doesn't make sense to me. Like, like little key things like that, that the writers have to be aware that Jedi's can sense their surrounding. Now, you could use, like, maybe the dark side is shrouding. You know? Like, all that stuff. I don't know. But little things like that, how Soul can't identify her and notice there's something wrong in the forest but is soul a bad guy we don't know there's a lot of stuff going on we don't know if the green chick's bad we don't know if soul's bad we don't know what he did why was may killing all these jedi like what's going on with the dark lord like like so many different intriguing things that we just don't know about and i think people just losing their mind because homeboy is shirtless and they're calling it 50 shades and i think that's just crazy like you can't have a shirtless person in star wars anymore i mean kylo was shirtless in the last jedi i mean i just like people are complaining about the dumbest things right i understand complaining the writing isn't great like the writing contradicts itself i understand that that's a very very well put together criticism that is very very true and accurate I guess at the end of the day, I'm just entertained by I want to see where it goes. I've seen a lot worse on Disney Plus. Book of Boba Fett, I'm looking at you. I've seen a lot worse on, on Disney Plus. I think Mandalorian in season three was a lot worse than this. And depending on how this ends in the, in the last two episodes, I would put this over Ahsoka, you know, because Ahsoka I thought was really good. But then when we got to the end, it just kind of fell apart. Like it just didn't make a whole set, a lot of sense by the time we got to the end. So overall, overall, I'm liking the, the show. I think the one bad episode was episode three or episode four. I can't remember which one it was. The the one with the witches of the power of men. Hey, that episode was absolutely horse shit. But man, just show me more of this guy. Show me more of cool lightsaber battles and just keep me intrigued. That's the thing, man. I have not been this intrigued by a Disney Plus show since WandaVision. And that's something. So anyway, guys, just my thoughts on it. Um, you know, if, if you don't like it, just don't watch it. I don't know. People are going to complain regardless, so let them complain, I guess. Thank you guys so much for watching. Chill out, calm down, and relax. Thank you guys so much. Until next time, I'm Robert Storm, and that's my opinion. Peace.